In this video, we're going to take a look at how to tear down a lower unit for the SRA or SR150. This is also applicable then to the 200 and the 100 and uh, 75 units as well. Uh, before we do that, I want to just run through a couple of simple tools we're going to need. In this case, since this lower unit is a flange lower unit, it uses cap screws. So I'm going to have my, my uh, uh, 5 sixteenths uh, Allen screw. If you have uh, some of the other versions require uh, uh, have hex head screws in there, and in that case you'd need a, a socket, and that would be a 9 16 socket. We'll use those to pull these main three bolts out of here. We'll also use a, a ball pin hammer. We're going to need two 5 16 bolts, roughly about an inch. The length on these aren't so important, but you want to get at least an inch long. We're just using these to, as a fixture. And then I'm using a, uh, the Nelson uh, NIC NX0799 tool, which is used to take the retainer nut off. If you don't have one of these, a spanner wrench may be used. Uh, I'd like to give, I guess, a little bit of a, a recommendation. If you, if you don't have one of these tools, I would uh, consider calling a dealer and either getting one or having the dealer do the work for you. You can use a spanner wrench, but they're very difficult uh, to, to do. This, this part that we're taking off has been torqued about 120 foot-pounds and the spanner wrenches usually are pretty short and it's pretty tough to generate that torque and a lot of times you'll strip out your spanner wrench or break the brass retaining nut that you're trying to remove. So anyways, we will go ahead and get started here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my lower unit upside down. I've obviously removed this from the gun, taken the elbow off, removed the brake springs. At this point I'm going to remove the three bolts that attach the flange to the cover and hold the entire lower unit together. I'm going to slide them off and set them aside. If you get a lower unit rebuild kit, you'll have an O-ring assembly in there that's uh, been greased and siliconed, or excuse me, graphite uh, put on the powder, or graphite powder put on the silicone grease. You'll want to replace that. Anytime you take this part off, I recommend replacing that O-ring. That's your main pressure seal that prevents the water from getting up into the, uh, into the ball bearings. So I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. At this point we want to break apart the rest of the lower unit. This here is the retainer nut. That's what this tool is going to fit into these two holes right here. If you're using a spanner wrench, that's where the, uh, the two dowel pins would fit into there. In order to hold this and prevent this from rotating, in order to, to back that retainer nut off, we're going to use the 5 16 screws. Go ahead and just thread them into uh, two opposing holes on the top of the, uh, the stem, just like that. And then I'm going to simply invert that, align the flats, and lock it in into a vise. Crank that down real good. Now you can see the upper part of the, the valve will move, but the stem in which this is uh, the, the retainer nut is threaded onto is locked into place. At this point, I'm going to use my, my torque wrench and my tool it slides down into the stem, into the retainer nut, and the two dowel pins fit in their mating holes right at that point there. And then I'm just going to back that, that off. Now it looks like the entire upper part is spinning, which it is, but the retainer nut is coming, is coming off. Now I pre-loosened this just so we wouldn't have to struggle here in front of you on the video, but if you're doing this, you want to apply as much pressure to your um, to your torque wrench here until you get that nut break broken loose. This, uh, this tool is going to want to pop out and this brass is very soft and it's very easy to deform those holes and if it does deform those holes you're kind of stuck. You're going to uh, be in a, a world of hurt as far as getting this whole thing apart. If you have access to a, an arbor press you can make a little fixture to hold this in and run the arbor press down holding that down while you're uh, while you get the uh, the nut uh, broken loose, that would be uh, very advisable. All right, so there we get our retainer nut off. You just you want to check out your retainer nut, see if it needs to be replaced uh, or not. If you have a nice chrome surface over the entire retainer nut, it can be reused. If you don't, if the O-ring is starting to wear through the chrome, if you see any brass at all, uh, brass colored in this area, you're going to want to replace that retainer nut because once that chrome wears through, if it does wear through, and you get to the brass, the brass will wear very, very quickly. So go ahead and set the retainer nut aside. Let's go ahead and take uh, the rest of our, our assembly. Let's come over here. What we're going to do now is this top piece is 
free to slide out. And when I say slide out, it's, in, it's gonna need a little help. It's gonna have to be tapped out because there's a slight interference fit between the bearings and uh, the, the main stem. So what I do is I stack up a couple sets of boards so that I'm supporting this brass ring right here, which is called the cover. And you simply just tap that, that stem just slides out. At this point, you're just gonna have to slowly kind of work it out. And uh, it usually takes a little bit of finessing, but eventually it will slide out through that second bearing. If you're in a bit of a hurry and don't have the patience to wait for that, you can use the ball peen hammer and just tap down on that stem and to get it through the, uh, the, next, uh, the next ball bearing. There we go. So there the stem is dropped out. I'm gonna set this part aside here. We're gonna lift the brake ring off. We're gonna inspect the brake ring. Again, in the, uh, the rebuild killed for the lower unit, it'll have a new brake ring, so you'll replace that. You wanna make sure that this seal right here that seals between the brake ring and the dust seal looks good and replace that if necessary as well. In fact, I would recommend anytime you open up a, a lower unit, I'd go ahead and replace all the seals, whether they look good or not. It's kind of like when you're in a car and you're, you take out the, or you get the whole engine out, you might as well replace the timing belt. It's just a safe, uh, a safe way to proceed since you've already did the hard work to get inside the, uh, the lower unit there. I'm gonna head back to this piece here. I'm gonna use my rubber mallet and I'm gonna tap on the rings of the cover right here just while holding the housing. And it it's nice and easy, just working your way around. Like I said, that just did, there we go, and that falls out. That exposes, that leaves our two main bearings and exposes our seals that I'm gonna remove. I'm gonna remove the lower unit seal and the upper seal is housed in the cover right here. I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull those out as well. At this point here, you've got all the seals out that you want. You can replace the seals. I'd go ahead and clean up the parts. And then we're gonna focus here on our, our housing. Now in order to tap the bearings out of the housing, it's gonna be very similar to what we've done for the, uh, the shaft. I'm going to use the two pieces of wood here and you're just gonna barely, barely get the edges of the aluminum housing on the wood. And then I'm gonna use a mallet and a driver to tap those bearings out. And I'm not gonna do it here because this thing is full of grease and it'd make quite a, a bit of a mess. After you've done the lower one, you can flip it over and tap the upper one out. And just reverse that procedure to replace the bearings. Just slide the bearings in, tap them in. It does, there's a slight, uh, slight interference fit of about a half a thou to a thousand. So it doesn't take a whole lot of force to get them in there. Just make sure they're, they're nice and, and parallel to the surface and tap them down. They'll, uh, you're able to push them down until they hit a hard stop in the aluminum surface. At that point, after you've put the new bearings back in, you're gonna to wanna to take this can right here full of this luber plate grease. You're gonna to wanna to put as much of this grease in this cavity as you can. It's, uh, using a tongue depressor is probably the best way to do it. Just spoon it in there, and then if you, you can look right in here how that one is, is filled with it, just using that tongue depressor to completely push it in there and push it up into the, each individual bearings. In order to put this, uh, the sprinkler back together, I'm gonna to put that seal back in the cover. I'm gonna move back over to our vise over here and we're gonna employ these, uh, uh, these 5 16 screws as well. First I will install the, the brake ring. The brake ring's got four lugs and you just simply press it in to its mating piece right there. The lug should be in one of the two center holes between the two threaded holes. Once you have that set up, we'll go ahead and put it right back here. Tighten that down. You're probably gonna to wanna to have a few shop rags handy because uh, the grease tends to move everywhere. I'm now gonna take the cover and I'm going to slide it right down. This upper seal has a little lip on it and you'll have to kind of press it around its main parts. There's a little seal ring on this piece here up at the corner. 
and you just kind of tuck it in there with your thumbs. It'll fit in there nicely. Make sure it's all, everything's free to move right there. Then we're going to take the lower unit with the bearings installed and we're going to simply slide that over and then I'm going to align these channels up with the threaded holes down in the cover. And you're just going to have to kind of work it around a little bit. And then once you get to the bottom here, make sure it's, it's, it's lined up. I'm going to take one of these pieces of wood and just give it a little bit of a tap. It won't suck it all the way down. That's going to happen when I, when I thread the retainer nut on. Get it started by hand. And then we'll go to our tool. Now, if you do have the proper tool and a torque wrench, you're going to want to torque this to uh, 110 foot-pounds, plus or minus 10 foot-pounds, so basically uh, between 100 and 120 foot-pounds. There we go. And I'm going to take this seal right here. The lip is going to be facing out towards yourself. You're going to slide it over the retaining ring and press it into the, the housing as such. When you're able to grab the flange, again, you replace that O-ring. Line the bolts up with the threaded holes. And then you're able to uh, torque these down. These are torqued between 130 to 150 inch pounds. All right, so once you have these three bolts, the three draw bolts installed and torqued correctly, just verify that this rotates nice and smoothly. You can either do it this way or you can pull this out of the vise and, and grab your, your screws up here and to make sure that the brake ring, everything, uh, moves nice and smoothly. At this point, you're going to reinstall your, your brake springs. And you should have one brake spring for every open hole. And then they just nest in these open holes. The lower unit's now ready to be reinstalled on the big gun and to head back into service. And to do that, you're just going to simply Reverse the process of disassembling, obviously. Put your elbow up here and run your bolts down through there. Since there's a lot of weight in that elbow, when you're reassembling, sometimes I find it's easy if you get a, uh, an elbow bolt, which would be a 5 16 bolt that's substantially longer than what you'd use in surface, and just to run it down, and that'll hold everything in place. And you can run the, the three bolts that will be used in surface down, tighten them up, remove the long bolt, and put the